it is your extensible style sheet language for an XML. An XSLT stands for XML transformations. See, in data power, any logical implementation that you have to do, for example, you have to transform a message from XML to SOAP, SOAP to SOAP, or non-XML to SOAP, any to any transformations, or dynamic routings, setting the data power variables, everything can be achieved by using an XSLT. And XSLT forms the basics for all your logical implementations in data power. And hence, we begin with our XSLT. We see every XSLT file will begin with a namespace declaration. See, ideally, if you see your WSDL file also, everything is going to begin with WSDL colon. It has a suffix called WSDL colon, correct? Sorry, prefix. WSDL colon types, WSDL colon messages. Similarly here, everything starts with XSL colon and hence we declare the standard namespace at the beginning of the XSLT itself. Okay, so we will use this namespace declaration at the beginning of an XSLT file. Either you can use XSL colon style sheet or XSL colon transform and this particular URL which is a standard recommendation for your XSL. Okay. Followed by we have a template. Every XSLT file needs to have a template. Like in a, in a C program we say it is a main function. Similarly here I need to have one template at least and I can have n number of templates depending upon my need. Okay. See here if you see you have the XML version, the style sheet, namespace declaration being done at the beginning. Followed by, we can see XSL template match equal to slash. Your entire template is getting started over here and it will be ended at the last. So no need to worry about these HTML tags over here. Just to make it more visible, more colorful, they have made use of this HTML. But in real time, we never work on these HTML in data path. So here if you see XSL colon template match equal to slash. For example, if you look into this, <coughs> on the left hand side what you see is your XML file and on the right hand side what you see is your XSLT which you are trying to apply it on the XML file. So here when you mention it as XSL colon template match equal to slash. When you say it as a slash, it means that whatever the logic that you are writing inside the template, that should be applicable right from the root element of your XML. The root element here is a catalog, correct? From your XML, you are asking the, your processor or your template to put the condition whatever that it has in the template to from the root element of the XML document. Let's say, I'll give other example, let's say, you have a node called the CD1, okay? So, and you are matching that over here. So, now what happens, wherever it finds CD1 as a node in the incoming request, only on that particular node, this logic will be applied, okay? So, we are matching the value with the node and that matches only on that particular node, we want this condition to be applied. Whereas when you keep it as a slash, it will be applicable on the entire XML right from the root element. Clear? Yes? I didn't get that. Yeah, see? For example, here I will write it as a slash, okay? Which means inside this template, I have a logic being written. Let's assume whatever it might be. So I want this entire logic, what I have written inside the template to be applicable to all my elements in the request. So if you, if you keep it as a slash, this logic will be applicable on all your nodes within your XML file. Whereas, you don't want to apply it on the entire XML. You have to specifically apply it on a particular node. You will mention that node value over here. 
CD1. So it will find for this node in the incoming XML file. See, CD1 it is present over here. Correct. So this logic will be only applicable on this node. Rest everything it will not be considered as the value it doesn't match with that value. Correct. Okay. So XSL template match equal to slash means you are going to perform this entire condition what you have written inside the template right from the root element of your XML document. You can see here. Okay. The match equal to slash attribute associates the template with the root of the XML source document. Okay. So you can decide. So you see when I mention it as a C, when I mention it as a CD1, it means that I am specifically looking out for this node. When I, wherever it finds CD1 in my incoming request, I want this logic to be applied on that particular node only. Okay. Confused? No. no. Okay. See, if I mention it as an example, CD2. Okay. But I don't find any CD2 node in my incoming request, then none of this will be executed. Okay. So if I mention it as a CD1, even in that case, if I find one node out of my 100 CD nodes, I will find only one CD1 node. So this will be applicable only on the CD1 node. Wherever it finds this node value in the incoming request, only on that it will apply this logic. Okay. okay. Followed by XSL value of what is this XSL value of means if I want to select or read the value of an XML element I will use this XSL value of syntax okay see you have written the namespace declaration a template and you are applying an XSL value of select. You can take this example. See, in the incoming request, you have catalog as a root, as a parent node, CD, and then within a CD node, see this is a sub child node, correct? And within which you have an element called title. So what our agenda is, I have to print the value of title and artist. So for that, what I use, the syntax is, XSL colon value of select. Value of select is an XSLT function which we use in order to retrieve or read the value of an XML element. See, if you see the output, it is printing the value of title and artist. See, Bob Dylan is an artist and it is printing over here. Okay. So this, what we call it as XPath catalog CD title see so for example let's say you have a movie some movie file within your D drive under movies directory so how do you navigate to that first you will go to D drive slash movies slash your file name correct it's an absolute path to retrieve your file similarly in an XML if you want to pick the value of an XML element we use an XPath expression and that will start right from the root element, which is catalog, CD, and title. See, this is a very simple XML file, so it is very easy for you to write an XPath expression. What if you have a complex XML file where you have to write a complex XPath expressions? In those cases, instead of doing it manually, what you can do is, you can go to your data power service, go to any service, Okay. Choose any of your data power service and go to match action. Inside a match action, you have an option called XPath tool. So you can go to your service, either WSP or multi protocol gateway or an XML firewall. And inside that, if you go to your processing policy and to the processing rule, 
you will have match action. Just double hit on this match action. Edit this match action. And when you go to the matching rule, you can see edit again this. Here, instead of matching type set to URL, choose it as XPath. When you choose it as an XPath, you can see XPath tool. Just hit on this XPath tool. XPath tool is an option which we have using which we can generate an XPath expression. See, on whatever the XML file on which you have to write an XPath expression, upload that XML file into your file management under the local directory and choose that file over here. Let's say I will upload my same example what I have it. Whatever the CD node we have, right? I'll take that itself. And I'll upload that XML file. So once you upload that XML file and choose it over here, the entire XML will be loaded at the, at the bottom. You can see here. The same XML, see? Bob Dylan, hide your heart, everything. So now, for which element you want to write an XPath? Let's say artist. See? Catalog CD artist. And let's say you want to specifically look out for artist equal to Bonnie Tyler. Just choose that. See? Catalog CD and artist where the name equal to Bonnie Tyler. Right? So you can just take this, copy this, paste it into your XSLD. This will absolutely work for you. Okay? So instead of writing a manual XPath expression, you can make use of this XPath tool, which is part of your data power appliance and other match action to generate your corresponding XPath expressions. So you can take any one, automatically give it. You, can, you just need to hit on that element name for which you want to write an XPath expression. Right? Clear? how to build an XPath expression using an XPath tool. Yeah. Okay. So just... Do as an admin, do we, do we write anything like that? No, as an admin, the XSLT is only done by the data power developer. Okay. Only when, as I said, like you have built a service, let's say your client is sending an XML and your backend is expecting a SOAP. So you have to write a transformation which will convert your incoming request from XML to SOAP. So you have to write an XSLT for that. Admin never writes these XSLTs and moreover admin never do the configuration of these services as well. Like whatever the web service proxy multi protocol gateway we saw, they will not be even aware of that because I have seen a lot of cases where my admin team and the other projects admin team, they doesn't even know how does a multi protocol gateway works how does your web service proxy works and all. They only know from the appliances configuration, like how to create a domain, how to give an user access, how to do a firmware upgradations, how to connect to a CLI mode. Only that will be done by the admin. Okay. okay. So you can go to... Yeah, just for knowledge. For... Yeah, yeah, correct. Yes, absolutely. Because, because most of the cases what happens, right, let's say, uh, the developer will not be available, but for an admin, if they ask to test like a very simple task of enabling the probe and capturing the locks also will be difficult for them. Yeah. Okay. And they will not be knowing like why to go with a web service proxy and when do we go with the multi protocol gateway, what are the differences between these services. So those basic differences also, some of the some of them doesn't know on that. So that's the reason uh, what I thought is I'll include few of the admin topics with the development and with the development also with some admin topics. So vice versa. So that will be easy to handle any of both admin and development. Okay. So you can go through with this W3 schools itself. We will discuss the few of the remaining XSLT part and we'll see a couple of examples like how to convert an XML to SOAP, how to do a dynamic routing using an XSLT, how to use a data for extension functions using an XSLT, those part. Okay. Okay. Just go through with everything right from the first session of what we had discussed so, till today. So any questions or any any topic that you want me to repeat, you can let me know. So we can have a session on that as well. Okay. And, uh...
How many sessions left? Probably another two or two sessions, I, I think, because only the XSLD part is pending. So once we done with that, it will be done. So meanwhile, if you are get ready with that, or uh, anytime even after this course is completed, let's say, let's for example, tomorrow it's a Tuesday, let's say tomorrow or if day after tomorrow, if it's completed, and maybe after one week, if you have some question, yes, you can always reach out to me. Okay, sure. Okay. And uh, we'll try to complete this continuously within the next days. Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll connect tomorrow and day after tomorrow. We'll try to finish it off. Tomorrow we'll see, like, if possible, we'll uh, have a session.